Chapter 13 Indian National Army At a time when the Quit India movement was in full swing, thousands of Indian soldiers stood in readiness at the eastern border of India for war against the British. These soldiers were members of the Azad Hind Sena or the Indian National Army. Netaji Subhash Chandra Bose was their leader. Subhash Chandra Bose had been twice elected as the President of the Indian National Congress. He was of the opinion that while England was engaged in the Second World War, India should take advantage of the situation and intensify the agitation in India. If necessary, India should seek the help of the enemies of England. However, he developed differences of opinion with the senior leaders of the National Congress. Therefore. Subhash Chandra Bose resigned from the position of the Congress President. He founded a party called the Forward Bloc in order to place his views before the people. In his speeches, Subhash Babu began to appeal to the Indian people to rise in revolt against the British. Therefore, he was interned in his residency by the British government. From there, he escaped in disguise. He reached Germany in the month of April 1941. There, he founded the Free India Center. From the Berlin radio station in Germany, he appealed to the Indian people to join an armed struggle for the independence of India. However, he did not get the expected help from Germany. At the same time, Rush Bihari Bose requested him to come to Japan. Formation of the Indian National Army Raj Bihari Bose was living in Japan since 1915. He had organized the Indians living in the countries of Southeast Asia and had established a society called Indian Independence League. Japan had conquered those territories in Southeast Asia which had been under British possession in the early part of 1942. At that time, thousands of Indian soldiers and officers in the British Army there fell into the hands of Japan. Raj Bihari Bose, with the help of Captain Mohan Singh, formed a battalion of these Indian prisoners of war. It was named as the Indian National Army or the Azad Hind Sena. Subhash Chandra Bose was requested to lead this army. In October 1943, Netaji established the Azad Hind government in Singapore. Prominent among his associates, were Shah Nawaz Khan, Jagannath Rao Bhosle, Dr. Lakshmi Swaminathan, Guru Baksh Singh Dhilno, and Prem Kumar Sehgal. Captain Lakshmi Swaminathan was the commander of the Rani of Jhansi Regiment. The tricolor was the standard of the Azad Hind Sena. Jai Hind was their salutation. Their clarion call was Chalo Delhi. Kadam Kadam Badhaye Ja was their marching song. Subhash Chandra Bose made an appeal to the Indian people to give their lives for the cause of India's freedom. The Campaigns of the Azad Hind Sena Towards the end of 1943, Japan conquered the Andaman and Nicobar Islands and handed them over to the Azad Hind government. Netaji renamed them as Shaheed and Swaraj. Arakan in Myanmar was captured in 1944. Posts on the eastern border of Assam were captured. But the Imphal campaign remained incomplete because the Japanese supplies that the Indian National Army was receiving stopped. At this juncture, the British received reinforcements from the American Army which added to their military might. Even in these adverse circumstances, soldiers of the Indian National Army were fighting with all their strength. In August 1945, America dropped atomic bombs on the cities of Hiroshima and Nagasaki in Japan. As a result, Japan surrendered. Around this time, Netaji Subhash Chandra Bose died in a plane accident on 18 August 1945. The Indian National Army was then forced to lay down arms. Thus ended the phase of the struggle of the Indian National Army. The Trial of the Officers of the Indian National Army The British government charged the officers of the Indian National Army with treason. 
The proceedings of their trial began before the military tribunal held in the Red Fort of Delhi. Pandit Jawaharlal Nehru, Bhulabhai Desai, Tej Bahadur Sapru and other distinguished jurists defended them. The military tribunal held the officers guilty and they were sentenced to life imprisonment. The Indian people had feelings of sympathy and pride for the Indian National Army. The punishments given to the officers by the British government gave rise to feelings of outrage against the British government among the Indian people. The British government had to suspend the sentences given by the military tribunal. The revolts of the Indian naval ratings and of the air forces. The inspiration provided by the Indian National Army caused discontent against the British power among the soldiers in the Navy and Air Force. It burst out on the British warship Kalwar at Mumbai on 8 February 1946. The soldiers flew the tricolor on the warship and shouted slogans against the British power. The British government sent the army and opened fire on the naval ratings. The rebels, too, countered it with bullets. The workers and common people extended their support to the naval ratings. Finally, with the mediation of Sardar Vallabhai Patel, the naval ratings laid down their arms. In order to lend support to the uprising of the naval ratings in Mumbai, the Air Force officers at various places such as Delhi, Lahore, Karachi, Ambala, Meerut, etc. went on strike. These revolts were a clear indication that the sentiments of discontent against the rulers had reached a climax. Thus, during the years 1942 to 1946, the foundation of the British rule in India was badly shaken. The Indian people had expressed their strong opposition to the British through the Quit India movement. Now, the Army, the Navy and the Air Force, which formed the backbone of the British power, also began to turn hostile to them. The British rulers realized that the days of their rule in India were numbered. The revolts of the Indian naval ratings and of the air forces. <laughs>